YouTube, what up? It's the Dungeon Master, uh, back with another video. Episode 17, getting up there. Um, this week, I made a thing. I made a beautiful little uh, three-tiered um, Mesoamerican temple. And I think you guys are really gonna like it. Bear with me, part one is a little long, part two is gonna be shorter. Um, I'm still trying to figure out some stuff with the editing and all that. Uh, so these bigger projects, I think that, I mean, they deserve longer videos because there's a lot of detail that goes into them. I try to show you guys a lot of different steps and a lot of different uh, techniques that go into these different things. Um, so, you know, I hit them from a bunch of different angles and uh, try to show you all of the various steps, which can take quite a bit of time. So just um, bear with me as uh, part one finishes up. And uh, when we come back next week for part two, uh, I'll show you, uh, you know, the rest of the coloration and stuff. So today covers pretty much from uh, inception all the way to uh, painting of the main structure itself and the main construction of the structure. So stick around and we'll get right into it. Hey everybody, welcome back. So, I uh, started off by cutting some XPS foam into squares, the biggest size my cutter would go, which is about 10 and a half inches. And um, these squares weren't perfect, but I, who the hell cares? Um, don't need to be that perfect with this. Um, and I staggered them. I went, I did two pieces of 10 and a half and Two pieces of seven and a half, and then two pieces of, uh, f I want to say four and a half, um, stepping down and in so that there was uh, an inch and a half on each ledge. Um, just uh, measuring it down each time, cutting off the excess, running it through. Um, the wire on my foam cutter is really tight, so I didn't have to worry about pushing too hard. Then I took the uh, middle layer and drew a pattern of it on the bottom layer went inside of it about a quarter of an inch with a pen and my square I didn't I don't know why I used a square I didn't make it that that square but and uh, using some double-sided tape I taped that one section into the middle actually I taped the two sorry I taped the two bottom sections together uh, to hold them temporarily while I cut out the bottom I, initially, I didn't plan on having any kind of an interior to this, but I felt like it was a waste of the interior dimensions of the foam to not utilize that space. So I, uh, like I said, I drew the pattern, taped them together to fix them together, uh, not permanently, um, temporarily. Thank you. Uh, and you can see a mark here on the upper right where I kissed it with the, uh, I kissed it with the, Foam cutter, uh, didn't mean to actually, um, go in the, at, um, in the center. Actually, no, I meant to go in to the center, but, uh, I decided to go out to the side and I feel like that was a mistake in the long run because I could have hid the, uh, I could have hid the, uh, the, you know, the entry point into the center of the foam with the stairs that I was going to put on later. So that was something that I learned from that. I took the, the, the central core out that I cut and I sliced off a, uh, three eighths of an inch from the bottom so that I could make the interior dungeon set, which is which ended up being roughly seven by seven, but a um, little slightly smaller than that. So there's one square on one side of it uh, that's too small. And here you can see my my hot glue is actually yellow. That's what happens when you leave your hot glue gun on all weekend. It actually will burn the glue and turn it from clear to dark yellow and um yeah so don't do that because you can really you can damage your hot glue gun and potentially set fires uh marking uh one inch squares with a dull pencil and then using that same pencil to draw the lines into the foam you don't have to push very hard on this you can score it with a knife if you want to first but this was so thin i felt like if i did that it might end up uh wrecking it uh, go through too far or something like that make the whole make the pattern too deep I just drew a couple of random lines 
and I tried to make them as random as I could to make them look like uh, cracks in the dungeon tiles. And this worked really well. This is probably the nicest piece of foam dungeon tile I've ever made. I'm kind of um, impressed with myself that I didn't resort to using my Hearst Arts molds for this. And um, we come in now and start gluing all the layers together. So again, two layers of each size to make up the, the outer dimensions of the ziggurat. Progressing into smaller sizes, and I just hot glued them together. Just a, a thin, thin bead of hot glue around the outside there to hold that all together. And um, now what I'm doing, I'm cutting some more eight, uh, 3 8 inch sheets to use for the walls for the top portion of the building. Uh, which uh, I plan to make uh, removable, so um, I wanted to make it hollow on the inside. I could have used uh, foam core to do this, but I had this extra XPS laying around, so I figured I would just use the scrap. And here I got a, um, a craft stick that I cut uh, 1 and 3 quarters inches. Uh, I measured one and three quarters inches up into the foam to get the doorway size. Here's an early attempt at making the roof portion of the top building. Um, I, I scrapped this uh, take later because I didn't end up using them. And here I have uh, the steps that I'm going to make. Uh, two sections, one of an uh, inch by three quarters of an inch. And then you have half inch by three quarters, or sorry, half inch by three eighths of an inch or whatever. I can't really think of the measurement right now. Um, and now we're just going to make a, a hell of a lot of bricks around the outside of this thing. Uh, so cutting with a knife um, and then following then tracing with a pencil, a dull pencil. And um, making a, a brick pattern, just an alternating brick pattern in the top of it took a long time probably a good uh, four or five hours I actually quit halfway through because I got bored and went back to it uh, all worth it in the end of course once you see the final product you'll be as pleased as I was um, rolling a, a tin foil texture on give it a little bit of depth uh, it, it feels it or at, at this stage when I was making it it felt boring the piece itself felt boring but um, it's a pretty simple design for a building, so there's not really much that I could do to make the actual building itself more interesting, except maybe do some, you know, some damage, make it ruined. But I didn't really want to go that route. I felt like, f yes, I could make ruins, and yes, I could elaborate on them and make them look nice, but there was no need to. I'm just doing the same thing for the steps here. This uh, half half sizes make up the distance. I, I don't. These steps weren't really designed to put a miniature on, and I'm really kicking myself for that because now the minis can't really stand up on the steps. So I might come back in later and kind of uh, you know cut out a gap on the underside of them or something so that I could fit a miniature base under it to balance it. But for now, it's fine. Um, it looks really nice on the table, so I'm not complaining. And here I have a, a triangle pattern that I made uh, using Publisher to make the um, the front side uh, steps, like the outside of the steps, kind of like the railing or the uh, just a, a design enhancement. I really liked them. Uh, but the angles and stuff were tricky, so I threw it in Publisher and just threw together a couple of uh, corners, and um, it was really helpful. Uh, you can use paint for this, you can use Photoshop, it, you can just draw it out with a ruler if you have the know-how. I, I just really didn't want to go that route, so. And now I'm just quickly throwing it on top of another piece of foam core and just tracing it with my knife, not even bothering to, to draw the lines with a pencil, because it was really not necessary. With a nice sharp hobby knife, you can just trace it and they'll be uh, approximately the same size, so. 
uh, did that, did a test fit real quick, and then uh, peeled the paper off and proceeded to draw a brick pattern on him, just like I did with the rest of the temple. Just gluing the the side portion of the steps onto the face using some hot glue. Another thing that made this this larger project easier was just the fact that I could use hot glue instead of PVA to hold all the stuff together and not have it be noticeable, like at all. There's maybe one or two spots on the entire piece where you can notice that there was hot glue made, and I covered most of that later on. Uh, you'll see. Now I'm just repeating the same brick pattern on the small building. You can see the triangles that I cut out earlier that I ended up not using, and they are beveled, and later on when I remake those, I make them with the foam core and uh, bevel them the same way uh, so that when they fit together, they fit uh, perfectly in a pyramid shape for the roof portion, which came out really well, and I'm happy with that too. But you'll see that uh, coming up. And again, with just using the tin foil to roll the pattern on, or the, um, the texture on. Here I just I laid the pieces of foam core on top of the building and just cut them to length using the size of the building before measuring the triangles out of them for the roof and I just I put a dot in the center and measured from the or not even measured just laid my straight edge from the center dot to the corner and just cut and it was perfect I just cut it uh, at a pretty steep angle about 45 degrees and worked out great. Now two of the triangles had to be taller than the others and the taller ones were the, actually the ones that were shorter in terms of width. See that one right there? That's one actually one of the short ones. So on the short side those two triangles need to be taller than the ones in the front but not by much only by like a quarter inch and you just fool with it a couple of times until you get it right and it, uh, it, I don't have the math for this. I'm sorry I don't have the formulas for this but um, it was just guesswork and I guess I just got really lucky um, that they all kind of came together, that I got the right angles and everything. And then just carry the brick pattern onto those as well. And next, I, I decided I wanted to have a way to get down into the temple. So I decided to handle that with a trapdoor. So here I just have a one inch craft stick that I cut uh, a one inch length from. Uh, cut it off, sanded it, and then uh, drew a, a grain pattern into it and a, a plank pattern into it with my uh, with my scribe. And uh, you know, just kind of made the grain a little deeper, a little bit more cartoonish than it needed to be, and then brushing it with the, the steel brush made it uh, a little bit more detailed and got rid of the fine little uh, flakes that came off when I did the scribing. I'd make my own doorknob using some small um, glass beads and a small jump ring for the for the trap door. have some small pieces of uh, some small pieces of balsa that you can't really see here because the the person who filmed this damn you Steve is, uh, is a terrible cameraman but I just super glued this to the the craft stick and then cut off the excess
And here I, I've got my pin vise. I'm drilling a small hole into the um, the face of the trapdoor to recess the bead so that it doesn't stick up so much. And here on the top of the, the pyramid, I'm just carving. Uh, gonna, I'm gonna kind of gouge out the space where the trapdoor is gonna rest. So I just dug into it with my knife and started scraping. So I traced out the pattern of the door, cut out the larger chunks, and then just started scraping it away. And it worked out well enough for what I needed. If I had done any kind of pre-planning for this, I would have cut it out. But I'm impulsive and I just tend to start building. I don't really ever plan anything out. And next we're just gonna coat literally everything and a liberal coating of Black Mod Podge. Get that Black Magic base coat going on here. You don't need to go too nuts with the inside of the small building. Um, I just did the back wall, focused on the back wall primarily because that would be what you would see from the outside. Now this could be used double purpose as a small outbuilding if you wanted to, the, the, the top portion. I fully intend to just have it be an ornament uh, for the top of the building, or for the top of the pyramid, but you can totally use it for something else. That's what I love about the modular terrain. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm trying as hard as I can to get all of the Mod Podge I can into the small cracks and crevices. I'm not, I mean, I'm not belaboring it and spending hours on just applying the Mod Podge, but I'm using a thicker coat than I normally would so that it soaks in. Um, so that when I come back and hit it with my uh, sealer later, it doesn't accidentally, I don't, I don't accidentally get any of it below the surface of the paint and bubble out the foam. And here I just, I cut some quarter inch or half inch strips really thin on my foam cutter because I felt like the building was starting to look a little plain. I wanted to embellish it a little bit, so I just uh, cut out some of those, hot glued them on, and trimmed them as I fit them, and it made the building look a lot better. I did forget to texture a couple of them, so I did roll the tin foil over it after I had crafted, but it was pretty solid, so I didn't worry about breaking it or anything like that. And if I, I stick my hand inside of it, it firmed it up nice so that I could uh, roll the stuff over it. And again with the black Mod Podge, just... It's really good on foam. It seals it, it protects it, and it's about as... I, I, I feel like, without risking damaging the foam, the best way to base coat it. I, I love using double-sided tape on my projects, so I took the base, I put the uh, the interior dungeon part back in, and laid it on a piece of MDF that I cut just a little bit bigger than the temple itself. And I cut it longer than the temple uh, so that I could have a little bit of a front outdoor area so that I could decorate that with a little bit of flocking and you know do some more terrain like I did uh, on the burial mound video. And, and then I can just remove the double-sided tape after I dry out where it's gonna go and uh, use some brown primer to paint the ground color so that you know, after doing, uh, I feel like uh, doing texture paste or, you know, flocking or anything like that, you're not going to see the the light, light brown MDF showing through. This helps protect the MDF as well from uh, damage and uh, discoloration. It also helps the other stuff stick to it, I feel, even though it's it's extremely porous. Now we're gonna hit everything with um, khaki. 
I didn't I didn't have a desert color on hand, but I figured the khaki was good enough and in hindsight I would have used something just a little darker than this, but it, it looks okay once I hit it with a wash. Uh, you'll notice I thinned it down with a little bit of medium that I made. Uh, it's just it's just mixing medium matte mixing medium, Liquitex mixing medium. Uh, a little just a couple of drops of flow aid and a little bit of water, probably about a 50-50 mix of water and medium, and maybe one or two drops of flow aid, and that's it. And I just mix it in with the paint. I started using that recently instead of water, just to, to water down my paints, to thin down my paints, and I feel like it works a lot better. Uh, and here I'm, I'm doing a dry brushing with a uh, vanilla color to highlight it a little bit. And then the wash dulled it down significantly, so I, I maybe, you know, lighter color, darker color, I guess it didn't really matter at the end because it all came out looking fine, so it, all, all's well that ends well, I suppose. There's more of the medium, mixing up a nice um, batch. It's pretty satisfying to just blast a whole bunch of paint all over something, and it's really... Um, uh, meditative and comfort inducing. I really enjoy it. quick test fit and then uh, moving on to a uh, little bit more detail. I know it's, the process that I use for doing my projects, is, it might seem random, but it, so I'm often doing one thing while another thing is drying or if I get too bored of doing something so that I don't burn out on it, I'll move on to something else before I go back to it. Or just plain avoid it altogether because I just dread doing it, like doing all those damn bricks that I had to do. Ugh. No, I, I really never want to have to do that again, but I, I can honestly say as a crafter that that statement is going to get me in trouble because I will totally end up doing it again. And I know I will because I love the craft and I can't help it. hitting everything that I can with an, with more of that white uh, dry brushing. And then I'm going to hit it with a brown wash, the same as the other pieces. This wash, uh, I actually wish I had some brown ink to do this wash with. I ended up using a burnt umber to do this wash with instead. And I'm kicking myself for it because it's, I feel like the pigmentation isn't right and it settles a little funky in the cracks. I'm on the lookout for a large canister of wash, like a professional made wash, because I like, I like my homemade washes and all, but I, I really dislike that I have to make them each time and they come out differently each time. It's really a little bit underwhelming in that regard. I mean, it was neat to learn how to make washes and all, but I don't think they look as nice as a professional made wash. And I don't feel like dumping a whole bottle of non oil all over the top of a piece that I've made, especially something that large. Uh, I'm just going to paint the trapdoor with the same uh, old wood combination that I like um, with the, the burnt umber and the um, suede, the Craft Smart suede color. So like a gray brown. And it ages it really nice, and you can see that um, that grain texture that I got out of that craft stick using that scribe came out really nice. A little dab of super glue in the hole that I drilled with my pin vise, and throw that latch in there. And I'm I'm gonna try something different. I've never really used E6000, and this is the uh, the Gorilla version. I picked it up a while ago, and I 
I kind of used it for a couple of things here and there, fixing a couple of pieces of ceramic and stuff. So I never got around to trying it in craft. I figured this was a good opportunity to do it. It was in a low spot. You wouldn't really notice. and It worked like I thought it would. Hot glue would have done the trick too, or PVA or anything. And now the door is nice and recessed. And uh, this is the end of part one. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know that was a little bit of an arduous, uh, an arduous viewing for you. I, I tried my best to edit it down, condense it as uh, small as I could, but I think fi a 15 minute video is, you know, is right in the middle of where I like to keep things, but there's no way that I was gonna fit this much content into a 15 minute video unless I split this project into three videos, which I really didn't wanna do. I felt like um, leaving it half constructed with, you know, no, no closure on anything that happened. I mean, at least this way the structure has usability uh, and can make it to the table and be used uh, before being finished. And you can always add on to it, which next week we're gonna do when we get to part two and we're gonna add some really cool embellishments to this. Um, so I just wanna thank all my subscribers uh, produced by the people on, fine people on Patreon who subscribe to me every month. tight. somebody upstairs just sneezed. And I want to just say thank you so much to those guys. Uh, you guys have been helping me out. Uh, and it's a great incentive to wake up and get, you know, get, get comments from people, um, uh, encouragement from people, and um, just to have a general interaction with the people that I'm making this stuff for, for you, the viewer. So if you feel like I, I've done a good job here and you want to support the channel, please head over to Patreon. Consider becoming a subscriber. It's only a dollar a month. Uh, you get early access to videos, uh, you get to participate in polls. In fact, this video, the first ever Patreon poll from January, uh, I wanted to try to do those monthly, but it looks like it's going to be a little bit off. So maybe look for the next one. And I, I said before early March, probably more closer to mid March, late March, that we'll do another uh, poll because this was actually really fun. I was very uh, reticent to start this project because I, I don't want to build a Mesoamerican temple and I can't believe that's the project that won and blah, blah, blah. And it, it ended up great. It was fantastic. And I, I owe it to my patrons for voting for it. So um, I got a couple of more things uh, that I'm going to cook up to put on the next poll. And get voting on that. So if you want to support the channel, head over there. Um, if you don't feel like contributing to the Patreon or donating, um, you can do your shopping as normal on Amazon through the links below and I'll get a small cut of it and you won't get charged anything. It's wonderful and um, I, I love it. Uh, the people who who'd head over there and help me out with that, thank you guys so much for the support. I love you. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that and uh, I don't think I can say thank you enough. I probably already said it a million times. I'll shut up now. So stay tuned. Next week, part two, Dungeon Master out. Peace.